So, um, where is Felici and Lenny? We're talking about um, object clauses of effort right. after the discussion we had in class today. So, the key thing is that object clauses of effort are called object clauses because they function, grammatically speaking, as a direct object of a verb of effort. What char and what characterizes them, grammatically speaking, is that they have a, uh, they're introduced by the conjunction hapos, mm -hmm. and the verb in them is a future um, indicative, right. okay, not a subjunctive or an optative. Um, the other thing that characterizes them is that, from the point of view of meaning, they are the direct object of a verb of effort, okay? So it has to be a verb like, I strive to, I make an effort to, I bring it about that. Okay, in which what you bring it about or what you strive to accomplish is the task that's described or the activity that's described by the hapos clause. So I strive, I bring it about that you will be happy. I strive for the, the, uh, that, that uh, we all build a house, okay, or something like that, mm -hmm. in which that we all build a house function as, functions as the object of the verbal idea, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, that's the syntax, a, a verb of effort. The verbs that are introduced in this lesson are mechana amai, a middle-only verb that means to contrive, okay? Um, but you can also do it with the verb prato, okay, to tap. To, to bring things something about to do something. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can have a clause of effort all, all by itself as an independent mm -hmm. sentence in which effectively what you've done is to ellipse the verb of effort. So you can say um, um, hapos uh, may, here's the example in the book, hapos may nike thesis that Hapos me ni ke thesis the. Oops, you got a thesis the. Perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. you need an accent. So that's a sentence with a period out at the end of it. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what it means is, um, may it bring it about, you, you left out the verb, but it, it says, bring it about that you will not be defeated. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very um, intense form of of, uh, of a command, if you want. May it not may it happen that you will not be defeated. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So so it's a it's the object of a verb without a verb. Mm -hmm. And if you want to think of an analogy to this weird idea, um, there's another there's an accusative that we do in English and that you also do in Greek when you say uh, uh, "woe is me." Mm -hmm. Okay, which the the verb to be has a direct object in the accusative case. Is right, me? which is me. Okay. Always me is correct grammar, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, or you say, ah, me, mm -hmm. okay, in mm -hmm. which you use the, the, the personal pronoun, the object case, because you're the object of all, of everything. You're a victim, mm -hmm. okay, in effect, okay? So it's, a, it's a, an interesting way in which you can leave out a verb and have a complement. That's a very expressive kind of syntax, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Okay.